back with another Basset Hound video. So today's video is about keeping your Basset Hound healthy. I'm just going to give you some tricks and tips to keep your hound in good health and make sure that both of you are happy. All right, first thing on our list is diet and exercise. These guys do love to eat. Charlie would eat 24 hours a day if I let him. And they're not super active dogs. He's good for a walk or two a day. We're not gonna go out jogging for three miles or take a five mile hike. So you really do have to watch the weight on these guys. Now because of the way they're shaped with these long backs, it's really important to keep their weight down. You just don't want a lot of body weight on that back. They also tend to carry about 70% of their body weight in their front legs here, which again is a lot of weight and strain. So just keeping their weight down, keeping their body composition good, is really good for the dog's overall health. Now I'm going to show you what I feed Charlie on a typical day. Yeah, I'll be totally honest, Charlie gets treats. He gets ice cream. He gets pup cups. He gets french fries. I mean, we do give him human food. Not a ton, but he does get human food. But I try to keep his treats to be things that are a little more doggy appropriate. So his two favorite treats are number one, hot dog pieces. So I just get cheap hot dogs from Aldi's. You can usually get a pack for 90 cents a buck. And I just cut them in a little thing pieces. And just a couple pieces like that for treats. This is great because each piece is what, five calories. I think a whole hot dog has 180 calories in it, and I cut them up into pretty small pieces. But yeah, hot dogs, what I'll do is I'll usually get two packs of hot dogs, and I'll cut them into little pieces, and then you'll end up with several bags full of hot dogs, and I just freeze them. I keep about this amount in the fridge at all time. Any more than that, then they might start getting spoiled as you use them. And then he loves these tr train meats. These are great. They're only about three calories per treat. Actually, you know, these ones are a calorie and a half per treat. They're nice and soft. They smell good. I think if I was a dog, I'd like them. But these are his two primary treats he loves. So I feed Charlie half homemade dog food and half kibble. This is homemade dog food I made. It's a mixture of chicken and vegetables and tuna fish and olive oil. I also give him a teaspoon of fiber twice a day to try to help with his anal glands. What the fiber does is that it adds more bulk to his poop essentially. So as he's pooping, that helps push more of the anal gland fluid out of his glands. For his kibble, I use lamb and rice recipe from Members Mark, which of course, as you probably know, is Sam's Club. One of the main things with picking a dog kibble is the first ingredient listed should be an actual meat, like lamb or chicken or beef. You really don't want that in first ingredient to be meal or a non-meat product. All right, time to feed Charlie here. So put his kibble in there. Put a little wet food in here. And then to make sure he actually eats the fiber, I really mush it up in here and make sure the wet food and the fiber all get integrated. All right, time to eat, buddy. All right, another thing you need to watch for is glaucoma. Unfortunately, bassets are just more prone to glaucoma. My first basset hound had an eye removed when he was about 11, I think. There's a couple things that you can do to help reduce your dog's risk of glaucoma. One of them is using a harness when you walk them rather than a collar. One of the problems with the collar is that as you tug and pull, that puts a lot of strain on the dog's neck and can put strain on that optic nerve there. I didn't actually know about this with my first Basset Hound. So with Charlie, I'm very careful to use a harness when I walk him, not a collar, just to prevent that strain on his neck. All right, next is grooming and overall keeping your dog clean here. They're pretty easy to groom overall, although they shed like crazy. They're not long-haired dogs, so I'll brush Charlie a couple times a month. I know I should do it more, but he doesn't really need a ton of grooming. However, some of the things you want to watch for is all this skin here. They can get infections in the folds of the skin, particularly if your Basset Hound has quite a bit of skin folds. So you do want to be checking your dog on a regular basis. Charlie tends to get hot spots in his elbows right here, his armpits right here. He can also get some hot spots in his groin. So just making sure that he's clean, he doesn't have any infections, that's really important. And their nails. I don't know about all bassets, but Charlie's nails grow really fast. And basset hound nails tend to be very thick. 
and very hard to cut. Charlie hates his nails done. It's a rodeo. We gotta go to the groomer or the vet and hold him down because he does not like it. I've tried dremeling the nails at home, but he just puts up too much of a fight. Um, I will say, if you're bringing your dog in to get their nails done, I really prefer the Dremel over cutting. Uh, Erasmus got cut really badly at a groomer one time and bled quite profusely, just because their nails are so thick and hard. So I do recommend, if you're bringing your dog in for nails, ask them to Dremel to grind the nails down versus cut. It's just safer for the dog. Basset hounds get a lot of ear problems. These really long ears just don't a lot allow a lot of airflow so their ears get stinky they get full of wax you do have to keep their ears clean i use this stuff right here and what you want to do just put some ear cleaning on a pad the same kind that we ladies use for our makeup and skin here put it over bubba and then you just take just wipe inside that ear now there's a lot of nooks and crannies and crevasses and it's easy to mix, miss wax. So when I'm done wiping, I take a Q-tip. Now be very careful, I'm not putting it in the ear canal. What I'm doing is going along the outsides. Because there's little areas that wax likes to hide. Oh yeah, he loves that, he starts groaning. And again, I'm not in the ear canal. I'm just going around the outside to the ear. I'm making sure I get as much wax out as possible. They also get pretty dirty on the outside of their ears because they like to drag their ears through everything. So I just take a cloth or a wet towel and just keep their ears clean because they will get pretty grody and pretty crusty. But yeah, that's a big part of grooming with the Basset Hound, is taking care of these ears. Chiropractic care is also something else I really recommend. Erasmus had chiropractic care almost his entire life. We went to a local clinic, they would adjust him, and then they'd use a red laser therapy on him. Uh, we just moved to a new location a couple months ago, and I was so happy to find out we have a local pet chiropractor. So Charlie has been getting his chiropractic care. And I really do strongly believe for Erasmus, it extended his life and gave him better quality of life. Uh, Erasmus was pretty, pretty active up until about his 15th year of life. He really had a long lifespan, he had a lot of energy. I strongly believe that chiropractic care was essential. The first time I took Erasmus in for a chiropractic adjustment, the vet adjusted him, and I just saw Erasmus just melt, like, oh, that feels so good. So just right from the beginning, I knew it was really helpful for him. Charlie's first chiropractic adjustment was a rodeo. He, he had to be muzzled. He really uh, went crazy. I think he was just in a lot of pain. But after that, every subsequent adjustment had been so much easier for him. It's funny because when I've seen my dogs get adjusted, they get kind of this dreamy look in their eyes like, oh, that feels so good. So. Yes, if you have a Basset Hound, I cannot recommend chiropractic care enough. If you have a local clinic or if there's some place within a reasonable drive, get your dog chiropractic care. They have long backs, they have short legs, they have a lot of musculoskeletal injuries that they can incur, and chiropractic care is just so helpful in extending their life, extending their flexibility and mobility, and overall, just improving their overall health. Well, thanks for watching this video. That's it for our tips for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Charlie and I enjoyed making it. So thanks again. Please make sure to like and subscribe. We got more Bass at Home videos coming your way. Thank you very much.